14 minutes before 8. Thanks so much for staying with us here on Morning Live. Now, research is currently underway in several countries for the development of a COVID-19 vaccine, and South Africa is no exception. African leaders and the World Health Organization are among many calling for the vaccine once developed to be made available to everyone in every affected country in the world. And joining us now to discuss this further is Professor Linda Gale Becker from the Medical Research Council. Thanks so much for speaking to us this morning, Professor. Good morning. I'm actually from the Desmond Tutu HIV Centre, just to be sure that I don't have the wrong credentials. Our apologies for that. Uh, so, Professor, which vaccines are currently in the pipeline? And uh, talk to us about South Africa's involvement in the development of vaccines at this stage. Well, in fact, uh, there are a number of different avenues um, well on their way. And I think that's really important um, because it's important that we don't have just one egg in the basket. And so around the world, there are a number of uh, potential candidates being moved forward. South Africa, obviously, is a really important place um, to research. We have the technology. We have the expertise. We've been um, looking for vaccines in various infectious diseases over many years. And it's relatively easy for us to adjust and to also research a corona vaccine uh, at this time. So interesting you should say that, Professor, because I was wondering about, for example, the difference in developing uh, vaccines for different viruses. We take HIV, for example, um, and 30 years later, we still don't seem to have an answer there. Uh, but when we talk about COVID-19, we are told that this could be maybe two years away. So uh, what is the difference in approach uh, when it comes to looking for a vaccine for different viruses? Well, the pathogen itself is really important. Um, HIV is proven to be a very difficult virus. It the reason being that it kind of hides its antigenic components, the part that the immune system really needs to react to. The HIV virus has got very clever about covering that and, and not making it available to the host immune system. One is hopeful that coronavirus is going to be easier, but time will tell. And that's why it's very important that instead of doing a serial kind of approach, we put in three, four, five different candidates into the field at the same time so that if one doesn't work out, an option uh, to be forward. So, Professor Becker, we uh, told South Africa as part, of course, of the Public Health Emergency Solidarity Trial under the auspices of the World Health Organization. Uh, but what does this mean? Does it mean uh, that uh, being in the forefront of uh, trying to find a vaccine, in, uh, being in the forefront of the development of a vaccine through trials, uh, will we then be among the first to get access to a vaccine should one be found? Yeah, I think this is the reason, one of the reasons why the WHO has got so involved um, in vaccine development now. Um, I think importantly, um, it's the WHO that will insist, if you like, and ensure that the vaccine is made available to low and middle income countries um, and is accessible to all. And so I think it's really um, terrific that the World Health Organization is leading the charge on this um, and thrilled that South Africa is part of that as well, because I believe we can play a really significant role in excellent clinical research to move this forward. And what clinical research are we exactly involved in at the moment, Professor Becker? Well, there's a number of um, therapeutic trials on their way at the moment. So we obviously want to find treatments that can work for those people who are infected with COVID. Um, we're looking at prophylactic options. So can we give treatments to people to stop them getting infected? And then, of course, there's the vaccine aspect, uh, which is um, really important as well. So, again, um, you know, I think we want to move towards our response, our research response to this virus from many different uh, prongs, if you like, 
And and I think, you know, th- that is the only way we can really do it efficiently and effectively and hopefully reduce the impact of the virus in South Africa. So with regard to the impact of COVID-19 and what we're seeing at the moment. So ordinarily, we told a vaccine would be developed over a number of months, years even. Is that process being accelerated at the moment? And if so, how? I understand it is being accelerated. So the normal process is when there is a candidate vaccine, it first goes into animal models, from animal models into phase one, phase two, phase three. Um, and then if it's efficacious, it gets, um, you know, manufactured and, and uh, moves into uh, production. All of those various steps, I understand, are now being um, moved into parallel. So even the manufacture of the best candidates is already moving forward with the risk that it may not work, in which case the manufacture of the, of the vaccine products will have been wasted. But indeed, if it works, we will have bought ourselves a great deal of time. So these are the ways to accelerate the steps that would normally be in a very serial fashion. We now are making them parallel, which I think is going to buy us a lot of time. In addition to this, um, it's become a global uh, enterprise um, and people are working around the world, which also helps to accelerate. And of course, when you're moving a number of candidates forward, It does mean that if one doesn't work, we don't have to wait for another uh, to be developed, but we can quickly move to to, uh, a second promising candidate. So ordinarily, how many phases does a a vaccine trial go through? And are we likely to see that being adhered to in finding or in the quest to find um, a vaccine for COVID-19? Yes, I think it's important that this doesn't mean we take shortcuts. Um, It's very critical that the vaccine should not cause harm. Um, And we've learned that over many years uh, in clinical and R&D of various um, medicinal products. So initially, the vaccine will go into healthy volunteers who are prepared Um, who fully understand what they're doing, there's informed consent, and it's a small number of individuals to make sure that it is safe. From there, it goes into a larger group of individuals to make sure that it's safe, and we are seeing the immune responses we would expect that we would call phase two. And then phase three is when you really say, does this work? Um, And that becomes a randomized controlled trial to really say, I give this particular to some people and don't give it to others to protect the individuals who got the randomized trial and they are in a way. All of this is done with informed consent, with all the balances to make sure that we are doing uh, more good than harm. Very important that we first do no harm. Uh, And that is our tenet in clinical research. And uh, with regard to all the efforts that we are seeing at the moment, the trials uh, that are currently underway, at uh, which stages are the various trials? Is there any at stage two or three at this point, Professor Becker? All right, we seem to have lost Professor um, Linda Gale Becker there. And uh, we were talking to her about uh, vaccinations. And uh, Professor Linda Gale Becker is from the, uh, uh, from the Desmond Tutu uh, Center, I think she said. And uh, we were basically just talking about how far we are in our search for a vaccine for COVID-19. And of course, uh, she was just explaining there uh, that we should not take shortcuts because we should never... Uh, gamble with people's lives. So three phases of uh, the vaccine that it goes through and that uh, we should not uh, skip that particular process just to make sure that it's uh, safe for most people in any given population. So um, that's, of course, uh, where we are going to have to park that one uh, with the professor regarding um, finding a vaccine for COVID-19.